So I woke up today feeling like a million bucks, and I thought to myself, million bucks? Feeling great. Paco Rabanne one million. I haven't done a buying guide video on that. Actually, uh, none of that happened. But I was taking a look through my buying guide playlist because I know you guys really like those, and I've got a solid 20 or more buying guide videos done which may not seem like a lot when you look at all the uh, fragrances that are out there, but I'm kind of starting to uh, run out of ideas here. But I was looking through and I realized that I do have a, a basically complete collection of one million, aside from a couple discontinued ones and a couple limited editions, which are basically the same as the original anyway. So I'm gonna be covering all of the one million flankers that you can currently buy online right now, Let's kick it off with the original One Million, the iconic men's fragrance in the iconic bottle. Yeah, you've seen this before for sure. At one point, this was probably on just about every college guy's bathroom sink. Cinnamon, amber, and leather are some of the main notes. It's a, a sweet, spicy, warm, inviting scent. Um, really for its time, it was uh, quite innovative. Not that it was like super unique or anything like that, but innovative in a way of creating, uh, you know, a popular, loud, best-selling men's fragrance. They did that to perfection here. So why did this work so well? Uh, the main reason was obviously the marketing. Look, when you take a bottle and have it look like this and present this to the, uh, the masses, to most guys out there, they're going to look at this in all of its glory and just go crazy for it, and they're gonna love it. Same reason why Invictus did so well, same reason why Lamal did so well. You know, when you take a bottle and you completely create something unique, people are gonna love that. Us fragrance enthusiasts could care less about the uh, somewhat gimmicky design of these bottles, but for your average Joe, they love it. And of course, the second reason is that it does smell great. You know, it still, to this day, is a nice, pleasant smell. Warm, spicy, uh, kind of fruity from that orange up top. Uh, it it just smells good. This kind of also started to uh, kick off the whole sweet trend for men's fragrances. These days, there are better flankers, and so this one kind of goes, you know, under the radar. It's kind of fizzled out at this point. You know, when you talk about performance, it's all up in the air because of... Uh, apparent reformulations over the years. I can't speak on anything vintage. I can just speak on this bottle here, which I can't really find a batch code on. It is a tester, so it doesn't appear to have any sort of batch code. Maybe it's on the box, but the box is long gone by now. I bought this only a year or two ago, so it's a fairly new bottle. Performance on me is a good seven to eight hours longevity, solid projection. So definitely not a weak skin scent, but it's probably also not as strong as it once was. And that's just kind of the story of most designer fragrances these days. Actually, I did find a batch code, 91571. There you go. Next up, One Million Intense. This one has rose, cinnamon, and leather. So. A kind of similar note breakdown, but with the addition of a prominent rose note, a masculine rose. It comes across quite strong up top in the opening. You pick up on it right away. So it gives it a bit of a floral component, but you still get that spiciness and that richness like the original. Let's take a look at the bottle real quick. You can see on the front, it's relatively the same with the addition of Intense. On the back, this is where it is different. There's a gradient, so like a painted uh, gold look, uh, solid at top, and all the way down at the very bottom, you can see a little bit of exposed glass, and that allows you to have a little window to see how much of one million intents you have used. Probably not very much at all. Most people don't really talk about this. A lot of people probably don't really know that this is really a thing, but it is a thing. I didn't find out about this until not all that long ago. There are many other flankers that take the spotlight. This one just kind of, uh, well, it didn't really do much of anything. It smells pleasant. For me, I would actually choose the original over this one. I think that one overall smells better. I don't really care for the rose edition that this one has. Performance is solid. It's kind of on par with the original. Seven, eight hours longevity, which is good. Uh, kind of solid projection. This one is concentrated as an eau de toilette intense, and it does pretty well. Next up, one million lucky. This one has hazelnut, plum, ozonic notes, and honey is some of the main notes. So this one caught a whole bunch of hype when it first came out, like a lot. Uh, it was to the point where I didn't really get this right away and I was getting so many comments. Every time I would do a top 10 video, a top five video, I would always get at least one comment saying, where's one million lucky? 
Like, people were just going nuts over this one, and I really didn't have too much interest in it when it was getting all of that hype. And if you haven't noticed, sometimes that's kind of what I go for. I get skeptical when I start seeing something that gets a whole bunch of hype. You know, when everyone's commenting about it, when everyone's featuring it, that sort of thing. That's when I really kind of, uh, you know, take a step back and try to assess for myself. And that's essentially what I did here with this one. I did not buy this one right away. Surprisingly enough, it has a bit of a different twist. You know, they're utilizing notes here that you don't see every day, especially from a designer brand. The hazelnut, the plum, the honey, those are all things that for sure have been used, but not all the time in uh, the designer level. And, uh, you know, it, it was surprising to see, especially being that it is a one million flanker. Now, with that being said, it's not super unique. It's not super different, but it does give you a little bit of a different twist. The plum opening smells amazing, gives you a bit of a fruity freshness. There's also freshness from the ozonic notes. And then you get this nutty, sweet type of smell from the hazelnut and uh, just kind of the rest of the uh, one million DNA that lingers in here. The honey gives it a bit of a syrupy sweetness as well. This is one of those ultra mass pleasing, great compliment getting scents. And performance is also on this one's side as well. Now it's only a mere eau de toilette concentration, but it has, you know, every bit of eight, nine hours longevity on my skin and relatively strong projection. For someone who wants something that's gonna be kind of quiet and refined, this is not gonna be for you. This one here is loud on every aspect from the uh, smell being kind of loud and boisterous to the performance as well. And really quick, before we move any further with this, I wanna let you know I did post a couple of vlogs over on my channel memberships. You can check that out by hitting the join button next to the subscribe button or hitting the link down below in the description. If you wanna get to know me on a more personal level, see some of my other hobbies and kind of see what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, check that out. Again, you can also get access to a private chat room where you can talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, get, get early access to these videos, get bonus top five and top 10 fragrance videos. All of that stuff is found over there. So if this video ends up helping you out, consider supporting me and helping me out and checking out the channel memberships. Hey, we'll see you over there. Up next, 1 million Privé. This one has cinnamon, tobacco, and tonka bean as some of the main notes. So with this one here, it has been rumored that it is discontinued. I haven't looked into this. I don't know this for sure. That's just what I've heard. And if that's the case, that would really suck because, spoiler alert, this is one of the best flankers. I know, I know, another designer brand possibly discontinuing one of their best things. Oh, what a surprise. One thing I do wanna point out, just about all of these I have bought as testers. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that, but it's etched in right there. It says tester in a very ugly looking font. Um, but it is there and obviously these do not have caps of any sort So if you don't care about having a, a full presentation fancy box You can buy these as a tester save a few bucks and they just come in a plain box So like I mentioned this one here is really really good Let me spray this a few times because uh, I miss it. It's been a while since I've sprayed it since I've worn it But it smells incredible powdery sweet tonka bean a nice spicy cinnamon note a nice uh, bit of tobacco in here as well. This is a fantastic fall and winter scent. By far out of all of these, uh, the best one and the most unique, at least for me. To me, this almost isn't even a one million flanker because it really kind of steps off and does its own thing here. Performance on this one is also really, really good. Seven, eight hour scent, strong projector, that sort of thing. For the most part, this line is pretty good about performance, at least for my skin. Maybe it doesn't work for you, but they all kind of work for me pretty well. This one does come in as an eau de parfum, so overall it is a bit more rich and heavy and dense. I love the look of the bottle. I love the look of the fragrance itself, the color of the so-called juice, everyone's favorite word. Uh, the liquid has a nice color. Everything about it just screams fall and winter time, and for me, that's when it's best suited for especially fall. You can wear it in winter and it works great, but there's something about this one that kind of has uh, the autumn type of smell. And so, you know, I really like it in this time of year. If you can grab this one on discounters, now is the time to do it. I have two of these bottles. I'm probably gonna stop there. 200 mils of this stuff is gonna be enough for me. But if you have one, it may be worth getting a second one if you like it. 
and I will link all of these down below and I'll do my best to find a link uh, to this one or a few links I will put down there so that way you can grab this one uh, if it's available. Next up we have what is I believe the newest flanker in the lineup, One Million Parfum. Yeah, this is the newest, right? It feels like it's been a while since this came out. I feel like there should have been something else released between the time, but I don't think so. Tuberose, Sea Salt, Ambergris are some of the main notes. This one is a uh, just another floral take. So we had One Million Intense introducing the rose, giving it a floral component, and now One Million Parfum adding even more of a floral kind of uh, almost bubblegummy counterpart. Like there's a bubblegummy sweetness in here, which you know is kind of a uh, uh, typical of what's being put out these days. This is kind of the opposite direction that I would want a parfum to go in. And same with One Million Intense. I would be uh, not really adding bright florals to these. Instead, I would be adding some even heavier notes, but you know, that's just me. And so because of that, I like the uh, richness of the original One Million. They're definitely rich in comparison to this, and I don't really care as much for the, uh, the fresher take that we get here. This one is a true parfum concentration. It's just not something that you would expect. Performance is also good on this one, around nine hours. Uh, this one will last a good amount of time, as what you would expect for the concentration. Given that it is a parfum, the projection is a bit softer, but it does hang in the air a lot longer because it's just a much more dense scent overall in terms of its uh, concentration here. But again, in terms of its scent, it's not your typical parfum. That being said, it is mass pleasing. It is gonna be a decent compliment getter. It's just may not be what you would expect. Last up, one million cologne. So, of course, they had to jump in on the, uh, the bandwagon, the trend, with every fragrance line releasing a cologne fresh flanker. I do find this to be interesting, uh, the bottle that is. It is, from what I know, the only one to have a cap. So if you bought this as a tester, you may not get the cap. So it's just something to keep in mind. Everything else, you don't have to worry about it. Now there could be some of the limited editions um, that also may have a cap. I just don't have any of those, so I don't know for sure. There's nothing wrong with this style of atomizer coming out the front, but for me, I don't know. I prefer a traditional cap with an atomizer like that. That's just me. The bottle is also all glass on the front with, of course, the signature gold uh, kind of shiny paint on the back. It's also worth noting that this one is a 125 ml bottle, not a 100 ml. So you're getting a bit more bang for your buck here, 25 extra mils compared to the other ones. So this one has rose, sea notes, and citrus as some of the main notes. I believe like an ambrox and ambergris as well, but I could be wrong. If it's not listed, I do pick up on it. Uh, essentially what this one is all about, just about sprayed myself in the face there, is, uh, well, an Invictus Aqua style scent. Yeah, and you know what? It does a good job at it because it's Invictus Aqua leaning, but with that floral rose freshness. And while I'm not always the biggest fan on florals, when it comes down to kind of uh, taking a, a DNA which has worked really well and adding a twist to it with using something like florals, in this instance, I can respect it. Now, it's not like it's super unique to uh, copy off a of DNA and then just add rose and call it a day. I'm not commending them for that, but I do like it for the smell because it's a bit of a twist. If this smelled just like straight up Invictus Aqua and that was it, why would I like this? Because I have Invictus Aqua. You can go out and you can buy Invictus Aqua. With this here, it's offering a little bit of a twist and really, I don't mind it. I like it. It's even more fresh and a little bit less salty than Invictus Aqua. Some may like this better, and to some, this also may be a little bit more unisexual. So, you know, depending on what you're after. Performance on this one is mm, not the best. Uh, Invictus Aqua, at least the 2016, has always been a beast. The 2018 knocked back a bit, and this one here also knocked back a bit. Five, six hours longevity. Uh, projection is um, pretty good within the first hour of spraying it, and if you're out in the sun, it'll push out, but it does start to die off pretty quick. So out of everything here, this one will be the worst performing, but I mean, does that really surprise you? It's a, an aquatic flanker here. Now we're to the point in the video where I tell you my favorites and which ones I think you should buy. So starting off, obviously, one million Privé. If you don't have this, you gotta get it. You have to go get it. If you do have this and you have one bottle, it may not be a bad idea to buy another one. I did it, I bought one extra one, so now I have two total, uh, and I'm happy with that amount. If you wear it a ton more, then maybe you would wanna get a third, but again, I'm just going off of what I have heard a 
thousand other people say uh, in my comment section everywhere I'm hearing about this discontinuation so you never really know and again would it surprise you next up after that one that I do think is pretty solid 1 million lucky I think this is not a bad pickup if you are a younger guy if you are a teenager if you're in high school if you're just moving into college this one's one you should check out now I think if you are in your fourth year of college or you're gonna go for longer than that at that point, you're grown up a bit more. You know, you grow up quite a bit within a few years. And so I would maybe recommend something else, something a bit more mature. Um, but if you are, again, especially in high school, if you're just starting out in college, you're going to all the parties, going on dates, having fun, this type of thing here is kind of made for that. Obviously, if you're older, you can wear it as well. If you like it, wear it but I think it does kind of appeal to the younger crowd more than the older crowd. And if you can find 1 million cologne, I think this one is also worth a pickup, but I do believe it may be discontinued as well, more recently discontinued. For the longest time, you could find this for like 40 bucks or something like that. I'm not sure nowadays, but I will try to link it down below if I have it. And that's really it. If you like the original 1 million still, pick it up, whether it be for nostalgia reasons or just because you like the scent, go for it. If you happen to like the Parfum Flanker, similar thing, go for it. If you like Intense, same thing. You know, if you want it, go grab it. For me, the three that I mentioned are kind of the only ones that I would really bother with, especially 1 million Privé. Check that stuff out for sure. Remember, I will link all these down below if you want to grab any. And also, make sure to check out my channel memberships. You can hit the join button next to the subscribe button or hit the link down below. I just posted a couple vlogs there. So if you want a sneak peek into my day-to-day -day life, what I do, some more of my hobbies, and you want to get to know me on a more personal level and not just be known as the fragrance guy, check that out. There's also bonus top five videos. There's bonus reviews. And you also get perks like early access to these videos. And if you join the top tier, you can join a private chat room. Chat with me one-on-one. -on -one, ask me any questions you may have. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. Hope you feel like a million bucks. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.